Now, batteries can't replace diesel, but new technologies with ammonia are emerging and big money is pouring into the startups at the helm. Toyota has always chosen to go in a different direction in a world that looks to be moving inexorably toward 100% electric vehicles. About relying solely on electric vehicles, the Japanese automaker is still skeptical. Considering that Toyota is actively looking into alternate energy sources, they do have some exciting electric vehicles planned for next year. An engine for passenger cars that runs on ammonia, however, is a recent innovation that has the potential to reverse the EV revolution. And so, what are ammonia-powered vehicles? An internal combustion engine with ammonia as its main fuel source is known as an ammonia engine. Ammonia is distinct from other substances due to its constitution, which consists of one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms. Applications in industry and commerce make use of this stable compound. It is present in cleaning supplies used in houses. The compound was gathered from animal waste, and its name came from the Egyptian god Ammon. Likewise, it is a component for explosives and fertilizers. In the process of making synthetic fibers and resins, it acts as a catalyst. It is a significant substance that is utilized by all refineries, stops rubber from coagulating latex, and hardens the end results of metallurgical procedures. Since ammonia contains no carbon atoms, burning results in no emissions of carbon dioxide. Ammonia-powered vehicles are seen to be a viable way to fight pollution because of this unique feature. Ammonia-powered vehicles can be made to operate successfully in a number of ways. One technique uses hydrogen and nitrogen to break down ammonia, and the hydrogen is then used in a fuel cell to produce energy. An alternative method involves combining ammonia with other fuels such as hydrogen, gas, or diesel to facilitate ignition and maintain burning. Another trickier approach makes use of ammonia as the main fuel source and relies on cutting-edge technology such as homogeneous charge compression ignition, spark ignition, or compression ignition. The main benefit of ammonia-powered vehicles, regardless of technique, is their high energy density. They are perfect for sectors like power generation and transportation where energy density is vital because of their high energy density, which enables effective energy storage and delivery. Toyota considers using green ammonia to power vehicles. The largest car manufacturer in the world is Toyota. It created the first hybrids. Toyota has shown skepticism in its decision to place all of its eggs in the electric vehicle basket. With the Mirai, the first automobile to use hydrogen fuel cells commercially, it has had only limited success. Internal combustion engine ICE vehicles, which run on gasoline and diesel, make up the majority of the company's vehicle selection. Likewise, it has a history of success with hybrid cars that combine modest ICE engines with batteries. That's why it should come as no surprise that the corporation is looking into alternative fuel sources for internal combustion engines. The corporation might view green ammonia fuel as a stay of execution due to its significant investment in ICE technology. When compared to EVs, ammonia-powered vehicles may be less expensive to construct and operate since they are simpler to support in the transportation sector and supply chain. Likewise, these vehicles would be just as environmentally friendly as EVs thanks to green ammonia. Toyota has a 50% ownership stake in the GAC Group, a Chinese automaker. With a four-cylinder engine that generates 161 horsepower and a negligibly small carbon footprint, it debuted its first ammonia-powered model this year. Problems with ammonia fuel for vehicles include its slower burn rate and difficulty to ignite compared to gasoline or diesel. For pure ammonia to make up for the ignition problem, significant compression and boost pressure are needed. The issue can be resolved by combining hydrogen and ammonia. However, there is a challenge in producing green ammonia. The Haber-Bosch process, which was developed in the early 20th century to create ammonia by combining hydrogen and nitrogen, is currently used to produce the chemical compound for industrial purposes. High pressure, 200 to 400 atmospheres, and high temperatures, 400 to 650 degrees Fahrenheit, 750 to 1200 degrees Celsius, are used in the process, and the heat is produced by natural gas, coal, or oil, which has a significant carbon impact. How high exactly? The International Energy Agency estimates that the manufacturing of ammonia results in 450 megatons of CO2 in direct emissions each year, while 170 megatons come from indirect emissions. These emissions are mostly caused by the manufacture of fertilizers. 
that is twice as much CO2 as created per ton, or 2.4 tons, as opposed to steel and cement. In order to make ammonia manufacturing more environmentally friendly, adequate heat and pressure must be provided by renewable energy sources. In order to create ammonia by hydrogen electrolysis using wind energy, Siemens and the University of Oxford are collaborating. In order to capture hydrogen from the air and combine it with nitrogen to create ammonia for energy storage, the Siemens Green Ammonia Demonstrator at the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory in the United Kingdom uses water electrolysis driven by a wind turbine. Likewise, establishing a network for ammonia distribution will be a challenge. Toyota's ammonia-powered vehicles will encounter the same distribution issues as EVs. Where do you get your fuel? For electric cars, this has meant building a fast charging network that is just as widespread as the one that currently supplies gasoline and diesel cars. How big is the network that distributes fossil fuels? There are currently 168,000 stations in the United States. In Europe, 14,000. 12,000 in Canada. Over 22,000 in China. 25,000 in Russia. 6,500 in Australia. Over 8,300 in the UK and 29,000 in Japan. Toyota will need to carve out a niche for itself in the fossil fuel industry for ammonia-powered vehicles, or else it will have to contend with the same difficulties that its Mirai model and other hydrogen-powered vehicles that have tried to enter the mainstream of the green vehicle movement have encountered. Infrastructure for hydrogen and fossil fuels can be starkly compared. The global count of hydrogen fuel stations has finally topped 1,000, according to a report released by the Green Car Congress at the start of this year. There were less than 100 hydrogen filling stations in the United States. With so few locations to fill up, how can you compete with a car like the Mirai that runs on hydrogen fuel cells? Likewise, is green ammonia better than green hydrogen? Let's find out. With good reason, hydrogen has been the focus of a lot of research lately. Hydrogen has huge potential to be used as a green fuel. One major step toward decarbonizing the industry would be the development of a hydrogen-fueled shipping fuels market. Thus, what distinguishes green hydrogen from green ammonia precisely? What benefits and drawbacks exist? What obstacles need to be cleared for each? Can it be used going forward as well as today? Above all, who among them will emerge as the acknowledged front-runner in the field of decarbonization? Green hydrogen. Use of hydrogen is safe, clean, renewable, and emits low emissions. One of the most ecologically friendly fuels on the market today is hydrogen, which burns without releasing any hazardous emissions. By electrolyzing water to separate it into hydrogen and oxygen, hydrogen may be extracted. Because electricity is needed for this procedure, it cannot be considered green unless the power comes from renewable sources. Solar energy is typically used to provide the electricity needed for this procedure. Green ammonia. Currently under consideration are two types of green hydrogen, albeit one is being explored more extensively than the other. Compared to green hydrogen, green ammonia is significantly easier to create and store, making it a far more practical option. Likewise, because it doesn't require costly production methods, it is less expensive. A liquid fuel that is suitable for use in current internal combustion engines is green ammonia. It is also made using a process known as hydrogenation and is renewable. An electrolysis of water technique yields both green hydrogen and green ammonia. For years, scientists have been able to divide water into its constituent elements of hydrogen and oxygen in the same way. It's just the process that separates them that makes it green. Here, electricity produced by renewable energy sources, such as solar or wind power, is used for the electrolysis process. Green ammonia and green hydrogen are sustainable substitutes for fossil fuels. Without releasing greenhouse gases or other pollutants, they can be made using renewable resources like water and natural gas. But there are a few significant variations between the two. At minus 34 degrees Celsius, green ammonia is a liquid while green hydrogen is a gas. This indicates that energy may be stored and transported more easily in gaseous form than in liquid form. When utilized as fuel, Green ammonia requires less processing than green hydrogen, although more waste products may be produced during this process. Green hydrogen and ammonia are both achievable today, as you can see. The primary distinction is that while green ammonia is more expensive than green hydrogen, it is also more efficient. And that ends today's episode. What are your thoughts on Toyota's ammonia-powered cars? 
share your thoughts in the comment box below. If you've watched up to this point, thank you so much. For more videos about EVs, Toyota, Tesla, Ford, and the most recent auto news, please consider subscribing to Tech Addicts.